this conversation begins with a question. Now, I think it's a simple question, but it's a question uh, nevertheless. It's a simple question, but it deserves, it, it demands a powerful, a powerful, a significant response from you and I. Yes, it does. Uh, the question is, do you love God because God is God? Or do you love God because it's a commandment? It's a requirement. I mean, think through that one. Through this entire message, I want you to ponder that thought. As I meticulate through this particular message, I want you to absorb it. And I want you to really ingest it, if you will. I want you to breathe it in. And I want you to think about it because at the end of this message, you should have a response. You should have a powerful uh, response uh, to this particular question. So, so let me ask the question again. Do you love God because God is God? Or do you love him because it's a commandment? Join me in Matthew uh, 22, verse 37. Uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees uh, have been tempting Jesus with all these questions. And so uh, one of the Pharisees decided to ask Jesus a question. And he asked Jesus, uh, Master, uh, which is the great commandment? That's what he asked in the law. Which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus replied that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all of it, every bit of it, with all your soul, that's all of you, all your soul, and with all your mind, every piece of it, every inch of it, all of it. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, you must love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Do you love God with everything that's within you? I mean, do you love him with all of you? I didn't say 50% and then 50%. Like, you know how we would love God 50% and then we love our wives 50%? We're trying to split it. We'll give God 70% and give our children 30%. Or we'll give God 10% of ourselves and, 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 and we, you know, we, we'll keep 90%. You know how that goes. I mean, you want to keep some for yourself. So, so I can't give God all of me. I mean, I can't because I want to save some for me. And so we'll love God with a piece of ourselves. It's like a piece of yourself. This is God we're talking about. So, so the question is, do you love God because God is God? Or do you love him because it's a commandment? I mean, do you, do you love him enough to give him all of you? I mean, I, mean, I know you're asking the question, but what about, what about loving my wife? I mean, God wants me to love my wife and love my children. Well, he, he tells you in the book of Ephesians, he tells you to love your wife. I mean, he says, hey, husband, love your wives as Christ has loved the church. I mean, he loved the church, so he, he died for it. So he wants you to love his, your wife. He wants you to love her. But he also, he's giving you a commandment. He says, love me, the Lord thy God, with all your heart. Yes, all of it. Not 90% of it, not 10% of it, all of it. So, so I want to make sure we understand um, the question that's being asked. And the reason I'm asking you this question is because it's, it's a good question that we all need to really consider. Do I love God because God is God? I mean, would I love him if he didn't do anything for me? That's what's on the table. Or, or I love him just because he, he is who he is. He's the creator of all things. I mean, do you love him? And if you do love him, do you love him because of what he gives or, or because of who he is? Think about that for a moment because it's very powerful. There's a, there's a songwriter by the name of Natalie Grant. Don't know if you know her. Natalie Grant. Uh, she sings a song more than anything. And, and it goes like this. She's, t she's really telling Jesus. She says, Jesus, uh, help me to want the healer more than the healing. That's powerful. She says, I, I want you more than I want you to heal me. I want you more than I want you to do something for me. That's how much I love you. Then she goes on to say, hey, help me want the Savior <laughs> more than the saving. She said, yeah, I want to be saved, but, but I, want, I want you more than that. Yes, because if, if I get you, I've, I've got all that. That's why we miss it. We want that without getting this. But she's saying, I, I, want you to, I want you to help me to want you more 
then would I want what you have for me? Then, I, then would I want what I want to get from you? You know how we are, we are takers at times. But, but, but a great song. So she, and then she goes on to say, help me want the giver more than the giving. Powerful. You know, we are takers. We're receivers. It's not about giving to us. It's all about me, myself, and I. But she slows it down. And she says, Jesus, help me want you, Jesus, more than anything. Have you ever told God that? Have you ever told God, um, I want the healer more than the healing? I want the savior more than the saving. I want the giver more than the giving. Jesus, I want you more than anything. I mean, what do you want more than Jesus? I mean, what is Jesus competing against? <laughs> Natalie tells Jesus, you're not competing against anything. I want you more than all of this stuff that's on, on this planet. I, I want you. I want more of you. She's saying, I can't get enough of you. And so she said, I'm setting my priorities in order. I want you more than the stuff that you have, the stuff you can give to me. She said, if I'm sick, I want you more than to be healed. She says, if I'm dying, I want you more than to be living. She says, if I'm broke, I want you more than, than wealth. She says, I want you more than anything. Can, can you honestly make that statement this morning? Honestly, can, can you make that statement? Can, can, you, can you say to Jesus that you want him, you, you want him more than anything? I hope you can. I hope when we finish this message, you, you will. Because that's where we need to be. Uh, the Lord is making it very clear. Uh, love him with all your heart. All of it. Uh, he's not about to share you with anything. That's not who he is. He's God. And he wants you all for himself because he, he knows how to manage you. He knows how to, if you will, handle you. Yeah, he knows how to properly organize your thoughts and your ways. Uh, everything else and, and leaving it up to yourself is just destruction. It's, it's distraction. It's, it's definitely uh, not headed the, wrong, the right way. It's, it's putting too much into you uh, is what we've been doing for a lifetime. We need someone who governs us, someone who can look over us and, and watch out for us. Because uh, left to our own vices, uh, we, we, are, we are destructive. It's been proven. I mean, look over your life. I mean, you, you've had an opportunity to run your life, uh, all your life, and, and look what you've done with it. Look, look what's happened to it. Uh, look at your children's lives. I mean, you've been running their lives as well. I mean, even when they're grown, you're still trying to run their lives. And look what's happening. I mean, it's, it's not where you want it to be because guess what? Because it's what you want. It's not what God wants. God wants us to love him with all our heart. If you spend that much time loving God with all your heart, with all your soul and all your mind, you don't have time for anyone else. You, you've got enough on your plate to take care of your business. But we find ourselves in everyone else's business. So, so I ask you the question again, do you love God because God is God? <laughs> or do you love God because of what you can get from him? Is that, is that who you are? Are you that type of person? Now, I don't want to have a serious message here, but it's just a serious message because it's just God's business, you know? And I want you to get this. I want you to get this. I mean, do you love God for who he is or do you love God for what he gives? That's the question. Yeah. Are you in love with him? <laughs> That's powerful. Are you in love with God? Are you in love with what God can give you? We're going to stay focused just right here. Are you in love with his promises? Hmm? Is that who you are? I mean, I'm just asking the question. I mean, who are you in love with more? Is it God or is it yourself? I mean, think about it for a moment. Do you love God because he is the God of creation, all creation, all creation? I mean, do you love God because, you know, we've been told that he's uh, omniscient. He, he's all knowing. That's powerful. He's all knowing. He's all wise and, and he's all seeing. I mean, who would love a God like that? But then he's more than that. He, he's, he's, he's omnipresent. He, he's everywhere at the same time. I mean, do you love God because he's everywhere at the same time? Because he's all knowing? And then, and then it says that he's omnipotent. He, he's all powerful. Wow. He's able to do anything. Anything. You've heard that song, anything. He's able to do anything. He, he has unlimited power. That's the kind of God I want to serve. That's the God I'm madly in love with. 
I mean, he, he's almighty. He's supreme. He, no one has more than him. No one is more powerful than him. No one can do more than him. Is that the God you fell in love with? Is that the God that you love? I mean, think about it for a moment. Do you love God because God is God? Or do you just put up with God because it's, it, you know, it's what you think you have to do? I mean, come on. Some of us, we just had both. We go, ah, just go along to get along. I mean, do you love God because you, you feel like you're putting up with him because you have to? Because it's a, it's a requirement? I mean, think about it for a moment. I mean, do, do you love God the way you uh, love your girlfriend or your, your boyfriend or, or your wife or, or your husband? You, you know how you love that old boy, you know, that boy you met, you know, you, I mean, you love him so much, you, 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 went, in, you went on Google, uh, you went on social media, and you looked up everything he's ever done because you wanted to know exactly who you were getting yourself hitched up to. And so you made sure you studied everything you could read about him. You, I mean, you did your research. You, you went through the Internet. You, you asked friends and you, you wanted to see his mother and his father. And you definitely wanted to see his siblings. And you wanted to make sure that you understood who his friends were, his close friends, because you realized that you needed to do all the research in advance before you said, I do. Let me ask you a question. Uh, do you settle yourself down? Do you, do you go on social media? Uh, do you go on Facebook? Do you go on... Do you go on Google? I mean, do you do you go to the library and, and, and research God? Because because you want to say I do to him. So you want to find out everything about him. Do you, you take the time to study God? I mean, like you did for that young man. Do, do you take that time to really research the word of God in, in every avenue that, that speaks of God? Have you have you taken that time to drill down into who God is? Because because you want to say I do to him because you you want to date him. You want to be intimate with him. You see, we give more time to people and to the world than we do with God. But I just want to ask you the question, do you do that? I mean, you know how you, you research that old boy, you, you asked all the questions because, you know, you want to spend every waking hour with him. You want to spend every waking moment with him. You know how you used to call him on the phone and, and you both would sit on the phone late at night into the wee wee hours of the day. And, and you would... You would just sit, sit there and talk with him. And after all the conversation had ran out, you're just listening to him breathe or she, you're listening to her breathe. That's it. You're just breathing. And one of you starts snoring. You just listen to the other person snoring. And it was just so pleasant to just to hear the snore because you were so in love, so in love. I mean, I mean, just think about that for a moment. You're so in love uh, talking on the phone, listening to someone breathe, just being intimate with them. Uh, uh, that's 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 who we are. Uh, that's where we are. Let me ask you this question. Uh, that might not fit you. You know, you were so in love with that guy that he asked you one day to skip class, to skip school with him, to, to go out and just, you, you, the two of you, just get away from the school. I mean, think about that. That's a big moment to skip school now. But, but you love him so much you did it. Have you ever skipped school to be with God? I know it sounds kind of strange, but have you ever just been in prayer, been, been studying, and you realize it was almost time for you to go to your class, but you said, you know what, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip this class. I'm just going to spend this time with you. Now, you do it for him, but have you ever done it for God? Have you ever skipped school to be with God? Have you? Have you ever, you know how we binge watch TV for our favorite program? You know how you record a series? And so you'll, you'll, you'll get all the move, you'll get all those um, uh, different series and it's like maybe uh, three seasons and it's, uh, uh, you know, eight uh, sessions to each season. And you'll stay up all night with your big old bowl of ice cream and your popcorn, uh, your big red, if you will. And you're just binge watching all those movies. And that's awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. Have you ever, have you ever binge watch? Have you ever binge uh, watching ministry and worship and and reading and studying. Have you ever binged over God? Have you ever got your bowl of ice cream and your, your, your popcorn and your, and your big red and just sit there and enjoy the word of God? Have you ever binged out with God? See, see, that's where we should be. That's where we should be going. We should be having fun. We should be enjoying God, the things of God. I mean, you skip school with that boy. Yep. You'll be and watch TV. Uh, you'll even call in and tell your boss, hey, I'm taking off today. I'm taking some paid time off because I want some, some me time. Have you ever taken some paid time off and had some, some God time? Have you ever spent time with God? Just like that. Powerful. I hope you will if you haven't. 
because this is a beautiful thing to do. It's showing God how much you love him. You know, uh, this, this is going to be a good one for you. Have you ever <clears throat> taken a pillow and put it up on the cover and fix the and fix the bed like it's a body in it, you know, so you can sneak out the window to be with your boyfriend? Have you ever done that? Have you ever put a pillow in the bed and had a body and turned the lights off and put, you know, the cover over it? And so, because if your parents came in, they think that you're there sleeping and you snuck out the window to be with your boyfriend. I mean, most of us done that. Have you ever put that pillow in the bed and covered it up and fixed it like it's a body and snuck out the window to go to a prayer meeting? Have you? Have you ever snuck out the room to go to a, a, a worship meeting or to a revival? Have you ever done that for God? I mean, I, we'll do it for each other. We'll do it for that knucklehead, you know, that knucklehead who's not going to treat you right, that knucklehead who's not your savior, that knucklehead who, who, who don't love you, but you love him. But have you ever taken that time to do those things for God? I just want you to think about it. That's who God, God is so powerful. He's so anointed. He, he's so loving that, that he's more than a boyfriend. He, he's more than a girlfriend. And keep in mind, he, don't become so common with him that you want to call him your boy and your girl because he's not. He's God. God is God. Don't change his name. Just because you can't deal with who he is, remember he is God all by himself. He don't need you giving him another name. He has his name, God. That's who he is in your life. That's who he is in my life. But I ask you the question again. Uh, do you love God because God is God? Or do you love God because of what you can get from him, because of what he can give you? Just That's one of those good questions, you know. God wants you to be so in love with him that you're courting him, you're chasing him. You, 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 you know how we say my nose is wide open for that girl? God wants your nose wide open for him. And you should want your nose wide open for him as well. That's when you know, who, that's when you know what you know and you know uh, who you know. And you know how good and what he means to you. You remember the story about Job, Job, Job in the Bible, you know, Job lost everything he had, lost his children, lost his, his house, he lost his entire family, he lost his livestock, he lost all of his servants. But not once did he curse God, not once did he turn his back on God, because Job knew who God was. And so, and so it proves that Job loved God for who God was and who God is. He didn't love God for all the stuff that God gave to him. I pray that you love God just like Job did. You love him for who he is. And if all the stuff you have is blown away, you'd still love God just the more because you know that God gave it and he can give it back to you. But more importantly, you love him just because of who he is, because of who God is, because God is God. I mean, do you love him because he first loved you? Because you know he did. He created you. The Bible talks about how he, he thought of you before the foundations, before the creations of the whole world. God had you in mind. So do you love him because he first loved you? I mean, do you love him because you fear him? <laughs> or do you love him because of all the stuff that he can give to you? I mean, there's a, there's a correlation between all of it. I mean, do you love him because he can heal you of your blood pressure? Uh, because he can heal you of, uh, of your blood pressure issues, your, your diabetes issues? I mean, do you love him because he can pull cancer out of your body and, and take it from you? I mean, do you love him because he delivered your son off of methamphetamine addiction? Uh, off of crack cocaine. I mean, do you love him because he can take those cigarettes, that taste bud out of your mouth, that, that alcohol away from you? Do you love him because he's, 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 he's blessed you in so many ways? I mean, do you love him because he saved your, your child? Uh, he saved your father? I mean, is that why you love him? Or do you love him because he's God? I mean, do you love him because uh, he's still working on you? Uh, or do you love him because uh, uh, he, he has so much to give you? And, and you have so much that you want to share with them. I mean, do, or do you love him because he's like an ATM machine to you? And you're always asking him for stuff. He's like government assistance for you. Do you love him because he's like your personal Santa Claus? Huh? Do you love him because of that? I mean, I mean, uh, do, do, you, do you see God as someone uh, who, who just, who, who heals the sick and that's what you're into it for because you know he heals the sick, you know he, he can raise the dead because you know he can restore the sight to the blind. I mean, do you love him because of all those things or do you love him because he's God? I just want to stop by and ask those questions. Uh, I, I know it's got you thinking and I want you to think because it's something to think. I mean, do you love him because, he, uh, because of his mercy? Because of his grace? Because of his glory? I mean, do you love him because he... he uh, uh, the universe obeys him. Uh, nature obeys him. The animal kingdom obeys him. I mean, do you love him because he's just that powerful? I mean, do you love him because the nature cries out to him? 
I mean, God can have nature worship him. Do you love him because of who he is? Because God is God is awesome. I mean, do you love him because he's the rose of Sharon? Because he's the lily of the valley. Uh, he's the lion of Judah. I mean, do you love him because he's a bright and morning star? I mean, do you love him because he's the root of David? I mean, do you love him because, uh, you know, he knows the end uh, before the beginning? Uh, because he's the Alpha and the Omega. I mean, do you love God because God is God? I mean, I think I've given you enough here to think about. Do you love him because, uh, I mean, do you love him enough that when you go on vacation, you take him on vacation with you? You take a vacation just for him. Do you love him because when you fast, you don't fast asking for stuff. You fast uh, uh, embracing him. You know, we could all fast and ask for things for our loved ones and, and for ourselves. But have you ever just fasted because you want to show God how much you love him? You want to demonstrate that you love him so much that you're going to go without for him? You remember the story about Daniel and the Hebrew boys? I mean, they would not come up for their diet. They would not come up for their diet. They would not bow before the king because they love God so much because of who he is. That they, they said, you know what, we're going to just die. We're going to go into the fiery furnace and just give up our life. But we're not about to bow before the king. And God blessed him. Uh, God will bless you if, if you love him for who he is and stop loving him for what he gives. He will bless you. He's already your hedge of protection. I mean, he's already given you uh, his only begotten son. So, so he loves you enough to, to, to bless you. To bless you. So I just want to stop by and ask you that question. I just want to stop by and pour it into you. Do you love God because of who he is? Do you love God because God is God? Or do you love God because of what he gives? Hey, I pray that this has been a blessing to you. I pray that you take time out to really focus on, on why you love God and why you should love God. I pray that you take the time to, to understand that he, he's, he's always been here, he'll always be here. But do you love him because he loves you first? He gave his only begotten son. I pray you love him because you just love him. Because you love him, because you love him, because you love him. In Jesus' name I pray. Hey, let this be a blessing to you. Remember, God is God. Have a blessed day.